Hi, everyone. It's Henry DeVries, the host of Agency Rainmaker TV. This is where we give you tips, advice, pointers on how to make it rain, how to bring in more revenue for agency owners and also strategic consultants and professionals. Welcome to the show. And I have a very special guest with me today, uh, someone who's been an author of mine. I've published two of his books now. And please welcome David Goldman. Hi, Henry. Great to be here. Thanks, David. Great to have you here. Let's jump right in. Uh, David, who do you serve? Henry, I've worked with lots of people over the years. I, I've narrowed it down to the people I serve best are professional service providers. And by that, I mean agency owners, accountants, attorneys, financial advisors, coaches, and consultants. So what do you do for them? How do you coach them? I, I work with these professionals to uh, who want to bring in more business without sounding like a salesperson. Well, I've certainly heard that refrain from so many. So what are the big problems you solve for them? Thanks for asking, Henry. Uh, two, two categories, a macro and a micro. The macro is I help people determine what it is they really want and how to get it. And that led to my, my first book that I published with you called The Road to Happiness, How to Get What You Really Want. And the micro is, uh, oddly enough, bringing in the business uh, without sounding like a salesperson and, and the bringing in the business book, you know, because you co-authored it with me and with Mark LeBlanc. And the two problems I solved there are most professionals have a lack, lack of clarity and a lack of confidence in their communication. Notice I stumbled when I said lack of clarity <laughs> and lack of confidence in their communication. So I, I help them with that. Uh, and how easy it is just to have conversations. Let's talk about how to make it rain, how you make it rain, David, and the advice that we give in this book about how to make it rain. I feel this is one of the three most important books I've written in my career. Oh, I appreciate you saying that, Henry. Yeah. I, it's certainly one of the three most important I've written since I've only written two. <laughs> yeah. You know, between uh, us, we've written 22 books, David. Uh, yeah, okay. Exactly. So, uh, so but, but I have a third one. I you have a third one, Henry. Wait for it. It's coming. No. And, um, you know, it's really quite simple. I'm glad you asked that question. It's a question I love, love, love talking about how to make it rain. It's three simple things that I do. I plant seeds. I have conversations. And I rely on networking and a uh, program that, of course, Mark dubbed his advocate program where uh, we produce referrals. I stay in touch with people who love me and would refer me. And so in planting seeds, I make three calls every day and uh, they can be calls to people that know and love me. They can be calls to people that I've been referred to. Uh, they can be calls to people that we consider to be legacy people in our life. Henry, you're one of the legacy people in my life. I will never let you slip through the cracks because that's how important you are. So I make those three calls every single day. And then the uh, art of having conversations just to be able to describe what you do in a sentence that either has people interested or they're not interested. And if they're not interested, that's fine. Maybe they know somebody who's interested. But the art of being able to have those conversations where people um, raise their hand, they want to have a further conversation. And in that further conversation, we determine whether or not we want to do business. But it's as simple as that. So the people that are listening for your people when we think about, oh, we've got to bring business in and how we, how do we drive these sales and how do it's, it's really a lot simpler than that. It's really having conversations with people who you serve best and would be best served by you and your service. So I want to set the minds of, uh, and not to stereotype, my mom stereotyped because it saved time, but not to stereotype, but millennials and Gen Z's uh, calling 
uh, frightens them. But we're really talking about contacting. This can be through LinkedIn. It could be through a, a DM. It could be an email. There are different ways that you're planting those seeds, as David's talking about. And then the conversations might happen in writing, uh, might happen orally, certainly. Uh, we're, we're old school. We're not afraid of the phone, but I know a lot of people don't like phone calls. I get it. And we're not talking that you have to call people and have uh, verbal conversations with people. What you do need to do, though, is a process of conversations that are enrolling them. We're not selling anybody. Um, some people say we help people who already want to buy something, but we're enrolling them like you get enrolled in a university. There's a process. You don't just, uh, nobody calls you from the university and says, hey, want a degree? And uh, you don't just show up one day and say, you got any degrees around here I could get? Uh, there's a process we go through. David, why don't you talk a little bit about the uh, process and you've refined it over the years. Henry, thank you so much for asking. It's, it's one of my favorite things. So the enrollment process really has five distinct parts and I'll just briefly mention each part. The first is there has to be a background of relationship. It doesn't have to be that you're great friends or bosom buddies. You don't have to spend 20 minutes trying to relate and, and get to know them. It, it can be as simple as, why did you want to sit down and have a conversation today? People will tell you why. They'll tell you what they think they want. And then that leads to the next area, which is a conversation for possibility, which literally is what is the possibility that your product or service could be for that person? And it's elaborate, and that can take as long as that other person uh, talks to you about it, but that's the key. The key to the conversation for possibility is it must come from the other person's mouth. So you need to ask, you the professional needs to ask the kind of questions that gets that person to elaborate on what it is they're looking for. And then the next part is the conversation for value where you have to ask a, a relatively tough question, which is, if I could make that happen for you, if I, the professional, could make that what you want happen for you, what would the value of that be? And, and get a real number. And that leads to the conversation for action, where the professional finally gets to talk about their service, their product, how it works, the logistics of it. And then uh, finally, uh, even when you do a superior job on all four of those conversations, very rarely will someone jump up and down and say, oh, that's just what I want. You have to ask and say, does that make sense? Or would you like to proceed? Something could be as simple as that. You know, I have a favorite question where I ask it on a scale of one to 10. One means you never want to see me again. 10 means you're ready to start tomorrow. Where are you? And then what would it take to get to 10? Um, it's, it's simple, it's formatted, it's not cookie cutter. It depends on the other person, how long those conversations last, but they're very, very effective and it does work. I've always thought it's just being polite. Let me tell, let me tell the viewers what a salesperson sounds like. So they reached out to you, there's the phone call and you say, well, first, let me give you a little bit of my background. And I've been practicing uh, law for the last 20 years. I uh, have this designation from the bar. I was honored with this. Uh, I'm in the who's who uh, and you go through. And then the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is our process. And here's, here's how we handle cases. Here's how we charge. This is our billing status. And, this. and do you have any questions? Okay, that, that's wrong on so many levels. Um, when I have what's called a book chat, uh, this is where somebody calls me and is interested in doing a book or whatever, I always start off the conversation with, well, for this call to be a good call for you today, uh, what do you want to talk about? Or since I'm a baseball nut, sometimes I'll say, um, for this call to be a home run, what's it going to take? Um, and I listen to what they have to say, to David's point. Mark LeBlanc, David Goldman, and I have been kicking around together for 20 years and have tested these concepts, have 
come back to each other and compare notes and teach these concepts and refine them. So it's not something that just uh, happened the day and a half ago. Um, David, tell a little bit about your evolution with the concept. Well, thank you so much, Henry. It's actually been about 35 for me. Um, however, uh, I, I, uh, I learned and this process in, uh, in 95, I was in a leadership development course uh, and I learned about the enrollment process in Chicago. Uh, it's a, it's, I think it's a great story. Uh, it's a story that happens to be in the book. I'll, I'll show it one more time. Um, shameless plug, shameless. but uh, it's, it took place in Chicago where I learned to be, um, interested instead of interesting. So, um, you you if you're interested in the other person and and what they really want then um and and figure out a way that you can help them get it then that's going to lead to more uh to more business for you so uh 35 years field tested uh when i'm at my best when i'm at my best it, it's you know i'm not I'm not even there. I, it does. It doesn't even show up like it's a process. It's just. It just flows. But um, you know, someone once said to me a while back. I think this is probably 20 or 25 years old. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. So if you've got the right fit, if you're in front of the right fit, even if you flub it, um, it's going to work because the right fit is the right fit. Perfect fits a perfect fit. So uh, it's been 35 years and counting um it's because i'm i came into uh, i'll just say short a real short blurb i came into sales in the j douglas edwards school of sales which was you have my money in your pocket and my job is to get it god i hated it i got good at it by the way because i had to survive i had to eat but man i hated that and so when i learned this um and then through the years perfected it it's um it was it was like night and day difference between uh you know loving what i do and hating it remember when i owned my agency and somebody invited me to come talk to them and uh the, you know they started with so why should we hire your agency which by the way the answer to that is i don't know if you should i don't know if that'd be a good idea and then and then quit talking <laughs> and they're gonna have to follow up with well you know i want a difference i said well we're not for everybody but mind if i ask you a few questions first so one of them was uh oh have you worked with any other agencies before and they said yes and they named the biggest agency in town the agency where i cut my teeth the agency where i grew up and you know left as a as a senior leader at that agency to form my own so what I would have recommended they do uh, would have been what they've already tried. But I said, well, tell me what you did, because they're a good firm. I said, yeah, they're a great firm. So you never down, down uh, what do you call it? Uh, you never put down the competition. You never talk them down. So do that. And also, I'll say, I'd say things like, oh, I'm surprised to hear that. You know? Yeah, and I love it when I, when, I when I meet with somebody who's a... Uh, you know, a, a type A type kind of person and they want to take charge and they uh, and I walk in and they say, OK, what do you got? I love it when people say that the, the biggest mistake. And this is the difference between a salesperson and an enrollment uh, person. A salesperson will start to tell them what they have. I just say I've got a couple of questions. Uh, first question is, why did you even agree to meet with me? What am I doing here? And the second question is, well, let's let's pretend that, you know, whatever this is that I do uh, would be valuable for you and it would work. What would you want to get out of it? What's you know, what what are you interested in achieving? And that's what starts the ball rolling. And and almost never. I, I'm not going to say never, because probably one or two instances in 35 years, people have blanched at that and not answered but almost never everybody wants to express what it is that they want and they're not clear about it. So they need to, so I help them with the clarity of that as well, because we get, we ask, 
more questions to to get deeper and find out what's underneath what they say they want. It's like someone can say, I want more business, but what's underneath that? What, what's really behind wanting more business? Do they want life to be easier? Do they want more balance? Do they want more time to themselves and more business would give them more time to themselves? Because sometimes more business doesn't give you more time to themselves. Right, Henry? Right. <laughs> I, I'll And I'll wrap it up with our research that we've done through the years and documented it. You gain the biggest amount of your credibility during that first conversation by the quality of questions you ask and the quality of the listening you do, that you're able to uh, give it back to them and say, well, let me understand. And then in, in real time, you repeat back in their words, not in your words, what they're asking for uh, gains a, a great deal of credibility. David, this has been so great having you. I see we're out of time for today. And uh, always there's always a seat at my table for you, David. So we'll have you back as a guest. Anything you want to add before we conclude? Two things, Henry. One, uh, just for your listeners, just uh, to know uh, it's easy. It's simple. Um, you can do it. It's it's uh, it it it's not without work. It's going to take practice, but you can do it. And uh, the second thing, Henry, is for you. I just want to thank you so much for the opportunity to be with you. I love being with you anyway, but just the opportunity to be with you in this mode and uh, being one on one is always a treat for me. Oh, thank you, David. Back at you. So. Thanks to David Goldman. Thanks uh, to all the people like Mark LeBlanc who've helped us along the way with this. And that's it for today. Until next time, make it rain. <laughs>